the study of um, the manuscripts of the Quran, I would say, is at, uh, at an early stage. It's in its infancy. There is a boom of studies on it, but there, are so, there is so much material out there. Um, we don't even know how, much, how many manuscripts are there lying around. We know that there are libraries with hundreds, perhaps thousands of manuscripts, many of them of the Quran, which have not been even catalogued. Um, one of these discoveries was made in the 1970s in the Great, great Mosque of Sana'a in the Yemen, where a group of builders were fixing a ceiling and the ceiling collapsed. And they found a variety of materials, written materials, which they took to the authorities. Now, part of this collection was one of the um, uh, these pieces that we call uh, palimpsests. That is a uh, a piece of parchment, a piece of animal skin, which has been prepared for writing, uh, has been written on with one text, and then later on, for whatever reason, has been erased and written on on top. So we've got two layers. Now, we call one of these um, palimpsests the Sana palimpsest, and it's the um, object of our latest book in the Quranic study series. The Sana palimpsest is uh, a, a manuscript made of parchment. This parchment has been uh, palimpsested, that means has been washed uh, very probably, rather than scratched, and another text has been written upon the erased script. So, in the case of the Sana Palimpsest, both both layers of text are Quran. The difference in time between the lower layer and the upper layer, both of them being Quranic, um, is very short. Perhaps 50 years, perhaps 100 years, but not more than that. So the book consists on the addition of both layers of text, the lower text and the upper text. Both uh, are uh, passages of the Qur'an and they are dated by the expert uh, to the 7th century for the lower text and 8th century for the upper text. The main objective of this uh, work is to understand for which use each layer of text has been written. Uh, why people in the 7th century wrote uh, Qur'an fragments and then, then they erased them and they wrote open the erasure, another Qur'an. So uh, the question is why and when and how they did it. These more recent discoveries in the study of Qur'anic manuscripts, especially the very, very early ones, the very, very early ones, they, um, they, they contain a number of textual layers and indicators to the context out of which they arose, which would actually help us uh, reconstruct historically the process of Quranic composition and redaction over time in a particular historical setting. Uh, in this way they would supplement material that we know from later literary sources and one very interesting thing uh, given the uh, atmosphere of uh, historiographic skepticism is that some of this manuscript material, this material, this material uh, uh, these material sources actually then confirm quite a lot of what occurs in uh, in later in later in later literary sources as well, um, and this goes really against a prevalent mood of skepticism towards um, Arabic sources in general. What we can say is that nowadays there are different techniques that are helping us. Uh, study these objects, one of them being ultralight, ultraviolet uh, lighting uh, and photography. Um, Photoshop as well has developed a lot. The other technique that uh, has also been used to date these, these manuscripts, these objects, is radiocarbon-14. Now, uh, for this you need to uh, cut a little corner of the object, which in itself is slightly problematic if you want, um, and put it, put it under the test. Now, radiocarbon-14 does not give you an exact year, it gives you a range uh, of, of dates, but nevertheless, the tests that have been carried out on the Sana palimpsest um, throw a very, very early date. So we're talking about the first generations of Muslims who have produced these texts. The 
French-Italian mission for the imaging of the Sana Palimpsest uh, was in uh, 2007, October 2007, and it, you know, it took just uh, one week for imaging the palimpsest. Uh, what is interesting is to underline the fact that for arriving to that week and be able to uh, do the imaging, uh, we needed uh, five years of uh, contacts, uh, establishing contacts with the Yemeni uh, authorities, scholars, in order to have permission, because it's not just a matter of imaging, but it's a matter of uh, having permission for making the images. The other important uh, aspect in the uh, French-Italian project is the fact that for the first time, uh, they used uh, a special imaging, uh, so they applied uh, ultraviolet lights in order to uh, enhance uh, the lower uh, text uh, and uh, try to, to make it more visible, more legible. The method consists mainly on uh, reconstruct, reconstructing the lower text as far as it's possible uh, because this erased script will remain palimpsested. We cannot reconstruct the whole text. And after the, the reconstruction, uh, the second objective is to edit the text, to edit the text with filling the missing parts. Uh, my book consists on an edition of the lower text and uh, of the upper text and uh, analysis of the particular features of the manuscript that show uh, the reasons behind writing these passages of, of the Qur'an. This discovery, together with other discoveries such as um, other manuscripts in uh, Birmingham, um, uh, a discovery uh, some decades ago in Cambridge um, and other places, um, have called the attention of the scholars. There are a number of scholars who are actually uh, studying the material aspect of the objects, uh, what we call uh, code ecology, and there are others who uh, are devoting their efforts to the study of the text itself. So as Mahilali, what she's done is she has done a, an edition of the text. The book itself does not reproduce the images of the palimpsest, but it um, provides the, um, the transcription of the text, which is an incredibly difficult exercise. I published this work in order to show that the Qur'an text is not an immaculate object. It has a history, it has been used by people. Uh, the Qur'an is, has not been always a book, but also uh, fragments. Uh, uh, written, collected, erased, annotated, explained by uh, students, teachers, for private rather than for public use. The Sana Palimpsest has uh, many interesting features, uh, like for example, uh, a different uh, order uh, of the surahs. So for example, Surah 9 is followed by Surah 19, and this is quite uh, a remarkable uh, uh, element in the Sana Palimpsest uh, with all the other elements. The book on the Sana Palimpsest really highlights the fluidity between the oral and the written, which really influences the way I understand uh, the transmission of Hadith, but also the transmission of the Quran itself, and the way in which uh, religious texts were received in the very earliest period of Islam. The study of these manuscripts may shed light on how people formed reading circles, um, how people were taught, how people memorized. Um, of course, there is an, there's an element of, um, of um, making hypotheses and uh, also speculation, perhaps at times, but these are evidence. Um, the Muslim tradition says that it was uh, the Quran was uh, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad and then it was written down by various companions in various forms. Um, some accounts say that um, some companions may have uh, compiled whole copies of the Quran and it, the, it was Caliph Uthman who then um, created a, an official, officially sanctioned copy if you want. Um, and so what the study of the manuscripts does is that it provides um, material evidence uh, in support 
or against some of these theories.